I would like to ask you, how do you feel about your body in this very moment? Are you proud of your body or do you try to hide it? Does it create stress for you when you look in the mirror? Is your body image holding you back from showing up in the world as the beautiful and powerful being that you are inside? When I started my design house, St. Pucci, in 1985, all my runway shows from Milan to New York featured models in sizes 8 or 10. That was the fashion industry norm back then. As time went on, I noticed an alarming trend. If we had models larger than a size 2 on the catwalk, the press would refuse to feature them in their magazines. In 2010, when Swarovski asked me to design a dress featuring their latest collection of various shapes of crystals, I came up with this masterpiece and showed it on the catwalks at the Waldorf Astoria in New York. As my model walked down the runway in this creation of shimmering crystals and intricate hand embroidery, the entire hall of more than 500 people erupted with excitement. But I was shocked when the press ignored this design that received standing ovation. I found out later that they had made a deliberate editorial decision that my model at a size six was too heavy. You see, the image of a fashion model is of great significance to our culture. She is a dream, an unattainable ideal, a paragon of beauty, and consequently, a symbol of oppression for many women who strive all their lives to be like her, but inevitably fail. Because of the media, body dissatisfaction has become an even greater problem in recent years. In Western societies especially, the ideal body is a body that is extremely thin, preferably white, of a certain shape and size. The very thin and beautiful models you see on the catwalks, on social media, in magazines, are considered the most successful and socially desirable people on the planet. Did you know that most images shown us are in fact photoshopped? A model is made to look lighter, taller, skinnier, and her skin tone is perfected sometimes to the point of being unrecognizable. Oddly enough, of the more than 15,000 women I have personally worked with over the years, most were between sizes 10 and 18. The reality is that the average size worn by a woman in the United States is size 14. Now, society's standards of an ideal body doesn't only apply to women, but to men as well. The male physique is often portrayed as chiseled and shirtless in various men's magazines, such as Men's Health and others, causing a feeling of embarrassment and non-masculinity in men, and driving so many to drug and alcohol abuse and steroid use. Women are not only expected to look thin, but also to look young. Old age and wrinkles are frowned upon. So many teenagers and young women will do anything to alter their bodies, either going through yo-yo dieting or going under the knife and cosmetic surgery. Today, girls as young as 13 are getting Botox to freeze their youthful appearance. It doesn't matter what they do or how beautiful and accomplished they are, most still feel they are not good enough. I should know because I was one of them. Even at the age of three, I was constantly compared to the females in my family. They were very, very fair and I was very dark complexioned. I still remember this parrot green colored frog that both I and my cousin owned. And uh, unlike her, I wasn't allowed to wear mine. All I could do was look at it longingly as it stayed hanging in my closet. So many restrictions were placed on me because of how I looked. That shame and the feeling of not measuring up to others' perception of beauty stayed with me for decades. 
it turned me into an introvert, and I became comfortable hiding in my own little world, pouring my energy into my studies. I became an overachiever, hoping that by showing my accomplishments, I would be loved. Even at the height of my success, deep inside, I never felt deserving or worthy. It didn't matter how many shiny objects I had, the latest fashion or the greatest achievements and awards. I felt incomplete. I looked for validation outside me, at my work, in my relationships, in acquisitions. It was exhausting. And then the car accident happened. This was March 2015. I was a passenger in the car that tried to run a red light at an intersection. The car was totaled. The driver came away unscathed. The airbag deployed and hit me, and my chest caved in. I couldn't breathe, and for almost eight months, I couldn't even lie down to sleep. That was a wake-up call. So many things could have gone wrong, but for the grace of God. Every waking moment was spent sending love to my body. I would scan my body from head to toe and thanking every cell, every limb, every organ for being there for me. My body became my best friend. It took an accident for me to realize my body is a miracle. I look at my past now and say, that's my past. My past is only as powerful as how I perceive it and the meaning I give it. We live in a society that would have us conform. We look at other people's lives and their body and their image, and we compare ourselves with them. You know, they show us the polished version, and it stokes this desire to have the right body, the right image, the right fashion. And one day we wake up and we realize what an empty existence that is. You can't win that game, you just cannot win it. It doesn't matter how hard you pedal, there's always going to be somebody with a better body, a bigger house, a hotter partner. It's quite hollow. Stop the comparison game and look at yourself and your body and fall in love with the beautiful and the less beautiful. Your body is a miracle. Now, I would like to ask you again, is your body image holding you back? Are you stuck in a limiting belief that you are not good enough? If so, I would like to offer you a framework that if you were to follow, would help change your lim limiting beliefs. There are three steps. The first step is to identify your limiting beliefs. In my opinion, this is the hardest step of all because you have to go back in time Somewhere, someone, some event triggered that in you, and you must deep dive into your subconscious and bring it to the surface. The second step is to weaken the existing limiting beliefs, because if you don't do this, any new belief that you put on top will not stick. Compare that to a moldy wall. You want to put new wallpaper, but unless you clean off the mold first, the mold will continue to grow underneath the new wallpaper. So as you go through the second step, ask yourself, this belief that you have, is this really true? Then there is a third step. Sorry. This is where you replace your old beliefs with new ones that won't limit you. You can do this through affirmations, visualizations, and even vision boards. But you must go through the first two steps in order to succeed here. The third step has helped me the most. And I would like to share with you a method I use to strengthen my new belief every single day. I wake up in the morning and I meditate. I light incense and I walk through my home, blessing each room. In the hallway is a large mirror where I stop for a long moment. I look at my reflection in the mirror. I look deeply into my eyes and I say to myself, Rani, you are beautiful. You are brilliant. I love you. I love you very, very, very much. 
love, appreciate, and accept your body. Your body is your best friend. Your body is a miracle. The strength of a woman is unparalleled, and society's definition of beauty often overshadows it. I believe that not only are we strong, but our differences are exactly what make us beautiful. After all, a rainbow would be pretty boring if it was just one color and one size. Thank you. <laughs>